Hello, good afternoon. Uh, bom dia, yes. Oh, boa tarde, this way. Good afternoon is boa tarde in Portuguese. So thank you, thank you very much for staying. Okay, six people, not bad. <laughs> Seven, sorry Susan, I was not counting you, <laughs> sorry. So, um, I'm Paulo, I'm from Portugal. So I'm not like most of you all, a college or a university teacher. I'm a teacher, I'm an uh, elementary teacher from a school. So, I'm really swimming between sharks and it's <laughs> a bit of a problem. And of course, this is also my first time doing this. So please indulge me and be nice, please. So, like I said, I'm bringing here a study that we made in Portugal about integration of OER in a group of schools, because in Portugal now we work in groups of schools. This means, as I have time, I'm going to talk a little about it. We have a group of schools that starts on the first grade and goes to the ninth grade. So kids between six years old and 15, 16 years old. And this is my school. It's a group of schools different levels, different ages, and this OER project was meant to, it was aimed to these kids and to these teachers, not on a university, not on a college, but with kids and with the teachers that teach these kids, ages between 6 and 15. Okay, this was an idea that struck me when I was doing uh, my work at Averus University and I had to talk about something that was never spoken in Portugal or that I knew, and it was OER. So, OER in Portugal is not a very, how can I say, it's not a reality in every day's work. The words open educational resources, it's strange for everybody or almost everybody. If you go to a Portuguese pages, you will find it in, let's say, 10 blogs or something, a quick reference here or there. I was talking to Susan about that, and she's probably going to move to Portugal next year, so. <laughs> so, so basically, I'm trying to, I was trying to do a thing that was starting with the kids, starting from down, going up and reach the universities. The movement, on the contrary, that you are doing everywhere else in the world, I think. I think, I don't know. So, ICT reality in Portugal, as it's, it's very different now. In the last two years it changed a lot, but these, these were the data I had when I started study. So technology was insufficient and outdated to compute it. Reduced the allocation of support equipment like video projectors, interactive boards. The internet access was uh, very reduced and very limited coverage. Local areas network at school were inefficient or uninstructed. Most important, the content. There was a shortage production of digital content and pedagogical applications. Collaborative platforms were very limited, very limited, and they were also very closed. Commun communication using email or was not used at schools and it was very reduced and the channel of information exchange was not very good. Training. There was very little teacher training about ICT and use it in education. Teachers have very limited skills on using ICT and of course there's the absence of a certification uh, and with the acceptation of skills recognition. So, what could we do? and where could we go from here? That was the, the big question and that was the thing that made me put my, that guy over there net, thinking, thinking, and what could you do? I thought, well, I can do this in the university with my colleagues, but I can do it with kids and teacher in the field. Okay, let's go to the field. So, this is nothing new for you, Upon education resources, we got them. We've got the definition, we've got what they include, 
we got the four R's reuse, rework, remix and redistribute for you of course this is not new but for us this is all new and of course learning objects, free software open course software and learning object repositories these words are not common <coughs> in the national Portuguese system so we thought and we read a lot about Linux, Apache and Mozilla and we got the open educational resources and the following question was could it be possible to promote the creation, use and disclosure of open education resources in a group of elementary and secondary schools? At the same time, engaging teachers and students from different schools and from different learning levels. That was the question. This was the project. And this is the project I'm going to present here. So, the problem situation was a reduced number of digital resources produced by teachers and students, a lack of sharing, a lack of a sharing spirit towards learning and teaching self-made materials. There was little interest in motivation in the creation of educational resources in a digital format, a lack of a digital culture and creation of sharing of educational resources and use of ICT in the classroom. Our aims and our goals were the creation of an education community of local teachers, and this is important, local teachers and students that promote collaborative development of OER and its provision for free. The idea was starting locally and then spreading spreading the word, spreading the project, and reaching more teachers and more students by regions, for example. So, the aims were integrating OER in the teaching and learning model, model in basic education schools, let me say there. Promote communicability between different schools of the same learning level. This means schools do not communicate because I, I teach in, uh, it's, a, it's the second higher point in Portugal, it's called Keremulu, it's a mountain, and our school, our primary schools, they are far away from each other, so people must use ICT to communicate. Use of open source software and web to, web to tools, and make communic communicability, it's difficult to square, between different learning levels. We wanted people, that, that students and teachers from the 5th grade and the 6th grade made some resources and shared them from the, with the students of the 7th and the 8th. The expected result is, <coughs> results were the creation by teachers and students of OER, not rare, OER, in different formats. To encourage a greater commitment, motivation and interest in both the act of teaching as well the acts of learning. We thought that by using OER, by using ICT, we could motivate and interest people in the act of teaching. Because there's a big lack of these things in Portugal now. Developing students' spirits of collaborative learning in an investigative and shared way. This is very important. We would like and we wanted students to be collaborative that they work together, they work in projects together, and that they investigate and go together, finding things, knowing things, and searching things. Enhancing education and effective learning platform, in making it available in a free and open way. So we wanted to put all this in a platform. This was the idea. Increase the use and profitability of ICT and, and the internet in teaching using collaboration, sharing as a way of learning. Internet in teaching is well. We're just starting. We're just giving the first steps now and it's been a kind of a challenge to put teachers using it in every, class, every classroom. Develop the need for research and development of alternative scenarios, technological resources of learning from REA. Implement the greater use of free software because people didn't know the difference between free software, uh, free libre open software, between shareware, freeware, they didn't know what was that. 
promote an increase of digital literacy in the community along with greater use of the internet as an education tool. In this research, we use, uh, we, thought, we thought that teachers should be, should be a teacher researcher. So we should use re reflective thinking and re reflective practices towards knowledge. The teachers will generate hypotheses while they investigate and which they test. This was a process made by all teachers involved in the project. We started with a small group, 12 teachers, and we ended with all 58 teachers at all schools. So the methodology we, we thought was the best, it was the action research methodology, of course, because it is an activity undertaken cooperatively by groups aiming to transform and change a certain reality by practical and reflective action upon it. This was no doubt our, our key word, action research. So planning, action, observing and reflective thinking. A research aiming educational innovation with the introduction of new elements, both project or process, in order to transform one situation in another situation that we desired. So, stages of our research was defining a problem, it was defined, defining a project, we did it, implementing it and monitoring, and finally evaluating it. For those who would like to use this methodology, there's a cycle the KMIS action research model, it's very important for us, and it works on planning, acting, observing, and reflect, reflecting. And it works in four cycles, five cycles, the cycles you need, but you repeat always the same process to go, to make the investigation go on. We use some techniques for data collection, techniques based on observation and techniques based on conversation. The instructor and these techniques were made by all teachers involved in the project. And structured observation, structured observation, field notes, and researcher's diary. Discussion groups, content analysis, and personal inquir inquiries. I must say this, that discussion groups were no doubt, no doubt the most important, most important tool that we had in our work. Because when people are discussing, ideas go up, ideas arise, and solutions arise. And this is one way to do the work and at the same time promoting it, giving new ideas. So, in results, and this is why I asked him the difference between <coughs> men and women, because I, I, I found something quite different, yes. I found no differences between men or women. But on the contrary, I find women much more producible, <laughs> okay? I find the contrary, so that one, that's why I asked you the thing. So, use of the OER in classes by teachers. After one year of implementing the project, 81% of the teachers used it, 90% didn't. So, good. <laughs> Creation. OER, OER creation by teachers, 72.2% did create OER in their, in their classes and at home for their students. By students, 71% did it. They did it in research work or school projects and they did it in individual work projects. Um, 95 and 50 it doesn't match because we had uh, three or four alternatives and we just choose the ones that add the most. ICT knowledge growth versus use of OER. Of course, main conclusion was that 86% there was a growth of ICT knowledge by using OER. Fields where it was increased, the ability to use different software. I, see, I know that this seems very basic, but of course in schools this is important. The ability to look for other resources, the ability to produce digital resources, and the ability to better research on the internet. As you see, the goals were very simple, but the results were very good, 
we didn't change very high because we knew the starting point starting point was not very good so small steps interest in learning how to create OER so 94.4 percent of the people were interested in learning OER of course and interesting on learning OER for this subject to apply in their classes 83.3 percent so this means that people just they want to know they want to learn but they don't know how to do it they don't know how they can do it and no one gives them the chance to do it that's the big problem OER change the teaching and learning ways in 19% of the cases yes how did change students they told we made some inquiries to all students in all schools they told that they were more interested in class they improved teacher attention in class and they learn better this is this question was asked to both the students and to teachers resources made free and available we asked them would you like your resources made free and available remember that Portuguese culture and Portuguese educational culture is very closed people do things but they don't share this is my work this is my worksheet this is my test oh can I no it's mine so it was a big transformation putting these people to share all the things on the web but they did it but they did it and the importance of sharing them on the on the online platform we used Google of course as because it was very easy it is an LMS as you know and it's very easy to use and very easy to learn so 91% of people said that we would like to, to, to share the knowledge on the Moodle first oh, sorry okay for students we asked students, did OER change the way you learn? 89.7 said yes, it changed the way they learn. In which, in which ways? I am more interested in class. I pay more attention in classes. It was easier to learn, 66.5. And I'm more interested in searching and learning online. This is a very, this is a very important conclusion too, because with OER, kids are getting smarter more motivated to make their self learn learning by themselves learning how to do things learning how to get things by their own they are not expecting the, the teachers standing there in a the traditional way well they are still doing that but now they are doing other things they are looking for their knowledge did I see knowledge got better after using your OER 91 percent point seven said yes it get, got better so what did got better in what ability to do better web searches ability to produce digital resources ability to use different different software of course gaming included high five etc etc and Facebook by using OER we increased uh, the use of different hardware we had at school some some video projectors and some interactive boards that were not used before OER after they started being used there was a creation of educational resources using different software not only the ones that we gave people looked for other softwares and try to learn for themselves there was increased digital literacy of both teachers and students increased it increased the use of different software and web-based services building different online sites like Moodle blogs web pages I'm trying to open the, the internet page of our project project it's two pages but it doesn't work we'll let's hope it will get there to the end of the session to the session there was an increased use of email as a communication tool uh, for example uh, paper in our school we spent a lot a lot of paper it was crazy so one thing that the board of directors said thank you very much because you reduced a lot of the use of paper now everything goes by email if one one thing comes a legislation or something they don't take copies and distribute for all teachers no 
Now they send it by email. And the email wasn't being used, never. Increased motivation and interest in classes, students, both students and both teachers. Development of an online learning platform and sharing of knowledge between teachers and students. This is a key word too, because when students and teachers are researching, are looking for better ways, are looking for better ways and better things to learn, they share. When I go to a class that a student tell, tells me, well, teacher, uh, about this subject, I've got a website here and I knew this, I knew that, and this was something new. We never had this feedback from them. And imagine getting this feedback from a nine-year or ten-year child. It's, it's very good for us. It's not a college degree, it's not a university, so it's a kid that it's looking, is looking for things to know, things to learn. This research project unfortunately introduced the OER in the Portuguese school system. It is a, a statement of applicability, introduces, it demonstrates the advantages of introducing OER in schools at elementary levels. I think that we must start there. Okay, university is good, university is great, it's easier to, I think, but doing it with kids, <coughs> doing it with small children, that's the key word. Because tomorrow they will go to the universities and they will take OER with them, not the opposite. It demonstrated the applicability of the differentials, uh, difference, okay, sorry, uh, of pedagogies. It presented evidence of effective, effectiveness of action research as a methodology. It can be seen as a proposal draft action capable of implementation of other schools. So, it is possible to implement all these things in other schools. We prove that. We prove that OER can be a catalyst for the development of various digital skills. It became a kind of a manual of applicability, opening doors to other schools and other educational opportunities. We think we have successfully implemented a learning model based on OER. So, ideas and goals for the future so learn digitally there goes the mouse and extend implementation of projects based on OER to other schools of different learning levels starting down going up the stairs to promote the implementation of OER projects in Portuguese universities I don't know if there are some ok they are in the north but they don't share we don't know them we don't know that. The adoption of OER as a standard in Portuguese national school system. What should we do for this to happen? Well, shout. This is the only thing to do because people don't hear. Uh, I was talking to Susan there. Susan told me that um, politicians in Portugal speak very well. But well, they, they speak very well, but they don't listen and they don't do very and they do very little. What can we do? How can we do it? We can do it only by giving hands, by using the digital learning and working in a cooperative way. No, I did it. Where can we go? Well <coughs> space and stars is where can we go and our limit is our imagination. So let's hope that one of these years, next year or something, I will be here giving you other ideas and gathering other insights. And I always like to return to the basis because this was where we started. The declaration of the Cape Town OER declaration. We are, so I'm not going to read it. I just put it here for you to remember because this is the thing. And this is not past, this is the present, and this is the future. So let's keep this in mind and okay, let's hope we can do it all. Thank you. <laughs> and sorry, I'm, I'm a kind of a nervous guy, so. <laughs>
Okay, kind of, <laughs> kind of a brainwash. So it was, I, I was trying to open the website, sorry, I will answer you in a moment. Okay, this is the, I will talk about this in a while. So, what did we do with, with, the, with the teachers? We started with seven teachers, seven teachers. Portuguese teacher, English teacher, maths teacher, in French teacher, one from each area. And okay, I started brainwashing them. That was the fact. I started brainwashing them, showing them OER, showing them other projects, showing them software, showing them tools, showing them a lot of <coughs> things that they could use and how they could use it. So we went to some sites, I made some some teaching, some coaching, of course, it had to be done because they didn't have the skills to do it. Then those seven stu students, the uh, seven teachers, started replicating their knowledge. So during the year, in their meetings, in their informal reunions, when they sometimes they were having lunch and they were saying, Well, I got a new thing on the web. Well, I will send it to you by email. What is your email by effect? So, one of the things I had to do in the project was to create a, um, a, a ma a, an email service based on the school system. So, picking the first and last person's name and putting at uh, minhascola.net so everybody knew everybody's email. And that was a great idea because every student knows every teacher's email. So, teachers like this using email talking, conversation in, in meetings, informal meetings, always informal, taking them out of their own time. Okay, to get to, uh, today, do you can, can we meet together at five o'clock? Oh, today, okay, tomorrow, okay, tomorrow, let's go. And it was kind of um, a mission. But of course, if they didn't help, it's their merit, not mine. They opened their mind to it. And they replicated the knowledges to each other, and it worked in fact. But it was a very group, a very kind, a very special group of teachers to do this. Of course, it is needed. It is. In the United States, states and school districts spend billions of dollars on print textbooks, whereas I think there's there's a movement in order to adopt some of the practices that you're describing, but it takes a long time. Funding the projects, there are no fundings. <laughs> Simple. If you, if you see the news and you see that Portugal now is going to bad times, so uh, funding is out of question. But it's a stupid thing to do because, of course, we spend a lot of money in books because we have, let's say, Portuguese teachers. How much, how many teachers do we have in Portugal? 1,000, 2,000? And we are all doing the same work. We are all do, teaching the same things. If we all shared our things, books <coughs> were not needed. Or they were still needed, of course, but in a different way. Books would help and not be the center of the learning, learning center. So, what I think that if this project was implemented first in the region and other regions and another region, it, it would go national. And it would save a lot of money to, to, to the budget, I think. How much support did you get from the administration? Very good support. Okay. The administration was great. Of course, saving money was a good thing. Saving paper, another good thing. And putting it on the web. That was the key word because our schools don't have don't have many projects that have an international reference or a national reference. For example, our, our page, we have two web pages, let's see if they are open. So this is the Moodle page and it's not open yet. So we have here, I'm telling here, the first Moodle by a Portuguese school with completely free access to all content, making our bet on open education resources when in line with UNESCO guidelines. Well. This is the truth. This was the first Portuguese model that was completely open. 
we looked and looked and looked and all of them were, were closed. Okay, you couldn't get access to anything that was done on schools. So I, I would, would like to show you, for example, if I go here and click on the Portuguese class, on the Portuguese subject, you will see a lot of resources made by students and made by teachers. And they are all free over the web. We, we got, we get almost uh, 100, 5,000 uh, web persons coming to our pages, or to our Moodle pages every month. And for a school like ours, that is Karimulu School in the, in the mountain, well, it's, it's very good. So, but of course, administration was the key word. Without them, we couldn't do nothing. Um, separating uh, the open educational resources from that and the sort of platform which was based, how important was the software in actually achieving your goals? The software? Yeah. Well, in our goals, as you see, I'm using Microsoft software. It's not a good thing here, I know, but well. <laughs> Of course, why do you use, first, why do you use Microsoft software? Because Portuguese government has an agreement with Microsoft. They put Microsoft <coughs> software at schools, at school computers, and they sell, the government sells computers to teachers, like this one. This one is a school computer. So it has Microsoft software. We make our, made our bet in free software. It was a notion that people didn't knew what was free software. And it was very important because people got an alternative to paid products and to pirate products. Okay? Of course, we, we had to do a lot of research, but when we doing it about three, four months, people was getting, I found some software to treat image, I found some software to do this, I found some software to do that, and we only used free software. That was one of the bases of the project. <coughs> Except Microsoft software, because people were used <coughs> to using it every day. So if we would install the open office in every computer at school, that would be a revolution in teaching would kid me. So I took that out, out of my mind. How using open education resources? Why, why do they like it better than just the okay. class? Imagine a classroom. Let's do let's let's do an exercise. Imagine a classroom where you still teach and you still learn in a traditional way. Okay? When teachers start using open education software in the in the classes. For example, imagine Google Earth, for example. Kids never saw Google Earth. Okay. When the teacher starts using Google Earth in the classroom, it's different for something new, for something that's simple for the girl. They don't know what to teach with the same way. I teach Portuguese. Portuguese? Yeah. What's the difference between reading? different it's still, it's still because kids are used to books okay I, I'm not the kind of guy that say okay don't use books no I think we must use books of course I still use books and I use books to do all the stuff I do I prefer using a book but when you give a child web tools for example blogs you, you can go and you can talk about Camões okay using a blog or using a wiki so you can do for example, a web quest using a wiki page. So it's, uh, it's, it's different for them learning Camões from a book or learning Camões going to wiki, going to blogs and interacting. Yes. And new didactics to produce new contents too. Yes. Okay. 
Let me just put this. Sorry. Okay, how do you evaluate the use of OER? That's the question. Well, we how, do you have to do it? how did we do it? We do it by interviewing every kid and asking their opinion. Interviewing every teacher and asking their opinion. And well, the discussion groups is a, it's a, it's a it's a place where you get a lot of feedbacks. Well, when talking to people, you get them to say what they are thinking, what they are expecting, and what they are doing. So, and you feel it on, on school, because when we started this, there was nothing. And then there was something, and people were talking about it everywhere. They were talking about it in the canteen, they were talking about it in the corridors. People, this is all new. So, when one thing is new, people want to know more, want to get more of it. So, answering your question, evaluating things, the results. And the results. Results, the students' results were very, very good. In these two years, the results were better than the other years. So that gave us an insight that probably OER made some difference. Because kids, like they said, they are more motivated, more interested, and they are, of course, if they like, they learn. The other question, I didn't get it, so. Uh, no. Every, every teacher is independent. Okay? There's no control. Now, how can I say this? I don't go and control what my, my other colleagues do, but of course I'm a Portuguese teacher, he's a Portuguese teacher. I use his work, he uses mine. So I use, I reuse, I remix. I remix, I make it better. If I share it, and it get, gets better than it was before. So it's a process. Everybody is using it, everybody is reusing it, and is making it better. It's the principles of what we are, in fact. So that's, wow. that's how we guarantee the qualities of our, our materials. For example, now in Portugal there is, there is a, what they call a school portal. So school portal, and they have educational resources. You send them, the portal, somebody that you don't know is going to evaluate them and say if they are good, okay, they'll put it online. If they are not good, they will not put it online. This is not the way to do it because this doesn't give teachers the motivation to, to, to share with them. I never send them any materials. My teachers never send them any materials. They are in our website, in our school, in our place, and that's the validation we need because we know that we are teachers we do things that are good for our students we don't need nobody from the, the government or the politics to say okay that's good and that's bad quite fed up on